And finally, let us wind up with the limitations of ratio analysis. What are the drawbacks of a ratio analysis? First, a ratio by itself does not convey much. It must be used in perspective. You have to compare it with the whole number. Suppose, suppose a company with a profit of 100,000 increases its, 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 its uh, profit percentage by 10%. It may not exactly be the same as another company which is which is which generates profit of maybe 50 million and increases the profits by 10 percent so so one has to always uh, understand or read uh, interpret ratios in the uh, in the in the entire scenario considering the full perspective considering the full picture right then we compare, uh, we see the prior period figures, the industry figures, etc. Correct? Only then, ratio only independently on its own, a ratio may not convey much. Remember, ratios are only indicators, right? They are like symptoms. If you have an illness, you might have a fever, that's only a symptom. The real cause of trouble needs to be diagnosed. The real illness needs to be found out. Similarly, ratios are only indicators. They point to a particular direction. They point to a particular direction. And we need to make a proper analysis, study, investigate and find out the causes. Ratios, of course, are taken from financial statements and therefore their accuracy depends upon the accuracy of the data in the financial statements. Financial statements also make use of certain estimates. Don't forget provisions. Provision for doubtful debts would be an estimate. The life of fixed assets is an estimate. Right? Again, a standard measure. We don't really have standard measures. Though we say a standard for a current ratio is 2. This could vary from situation to situation. This could vary from industry to industry. Ratios must be computed between related figures. There is no point having uh, meaningless relationships. There has to be a cause and effect relationship. Ratios may be computed slightly differently between companies. There may be different definitions of the ratios. These make the comparisons ineffective. Ratios are not really forward looking because after all they are based on financial statements. Financial statements are historical statements. They re report what has happened in the past. So to that extent ratios are also historical. Financial statements may have several extraordinary items. Why do you do ratio analysis? Are they to be included, not included and accordingly what it means one should be clear. Different accounting policies make comparisons of ratios difficult, right? If you can compare only when the accounting policies are also the same. Different accounting policies may be with respect to valuation of inventories or investments, etc. Ratios consider only internal figures, but before drawing conclusions, the environment, industry conditions should also be considered. Ratios are based on internal figures and on financial statements. So while we draw analysis, consider consider the environment, the industry conditions, etc. When and before making taking decisions, all factors of course must be considered. So what is ratio analysis? By themselves they are meaningless, they are only indicators and the analysis has to be done in proper perspective, in proper context. Interpretation should be intelligent, should be comprehensive. Remember if we only try to improve one ratio, there could be effects on other areas and the total picture should always be considered.